Uh, our right. guest in this segment is Senator Joe Manchin. I think we have uh, the senator by telephone. Senator, are you with us? I'm with you, brother. I've been hearing about this car. My God, 350,000 miles? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Yeah, what man. kind of car is it? What that's kind a, of car is it? That's right? a, a Honda, imaginary. <laughs> imaginary car. It's a Honda CRV. What year is it? 2011. Well, you've done a little bit of driving. I have done some. I uh, my my car I had in 2011 got totaled by a deer on the way in here one morning, and uh, this is what I replaced it with, and it just and keeps the on going. Usually win. Yeah, deers the deer win. always wins. You never win that battle. Have well, you, well, in a sense, the deer the wins. Deer, this deer lost. Yeah. Ultimately, paid the price. They ultimately paid. The price. Have well, you they'll sacrifice? They'll sacrifice themselves yeah, to win your car. Exactly. I can assure you that. Have you lost a few to deer yourself? I have uh, lost the front end of a car to a deer. This is why I think they should extend deer hunting season to year round, because if you don't get them with the gun, you get them with your car. Oh boy, I'll so. tell you, coming up quarter H, especially. Oh. Then the that was a tough one. Senator, the last time we spoke with you, you were still a potential candidate for president. Shortly thereafter, you were not. What changed uh, yeah. in those days? Well, I, let me tell you the thing that really I, I've, I've been able to see. First of all, to be a viable candidate, and I've always said I'd never be a spoiler. Remember when we talked about that? Mm -hmm. Well, you have to be able to get on 50 ballots, all 50 ballots. And right now, you only have uh, the Democrat and Republican uh, uh parties and i think some independents have to get on separately and you might have some green parties in different areas but to get a concerted effort to have a push from a third party you have to be successfully uh, on all 50 ballots and i didn't see that happening and then the thing that even drove it further rob was basically when i saw the border security bill which i think is the most challenging dangerous crisis we have in america today i really do and I've seen it from all different sides and angles, but people coming by the millions across the border, and we haven't had the uh, proper uh, the proper ability to adjudicate them to find out do they qualify to come to our country? Uh, should they be allowed to come into our country? Do they have a criminal record? Are they coming for the right reason? Uh, and things of that sort. We never did any of that to so many because we were inundated. That's got to stop. And my Republican friends back in September had said, Plainly, they weren't going to do any aid to Ukraine or anywhere else in the world, Taiwan or to Israel, unless our border had border security first. And I agree with all my Republican friends. I said, that's absolutely correct. And then all of a sudden, we start working on it. James Lankford, one of the most conservative Democrats, I mean Republicans, but and then uh, uh, Chris Murphy, they started, they were leading it because they were on the Committee for Homeland Security that had that bill in their jurisdiction. They started working on it, and James Lankford is the most conservative, the most moral, uh, valued person I've ever met. I, he's just a wonderful friend, and I didn't think that Jim would, uh, James would ever get to a deal, but he did. And it's a great piece of legislation. He got eviscerated by the Republicans after Donald Trump said, I don't think this is a good bill. So on Sunday, before we voted, everybody was for it. By Monday, they were questioning it. By Tuesday, they had direction not to vote for it. By Wednesday, it went down. And I said, this is enough. You're not going to fix Washington inside of Washington. So I said, okay, that helped confirm that I'm not going to be involved in being a spoiler, but I'm not going to be involved in this six-year sentence if I would have run again and won. I didn't want another six-year sentence, so I'm thinking, I can do my thing in my second life, if you will, uh, afterlife uh, of elected officials, elected positions, I mean, and see how I can basically bring it to people's attention, what they can do to make changes. How much pressure were you receiving from fellow Democrats to not make a third-party bid? <sighs> not, uh, not at all. I really wasn't. Uh, there were some concerns. I understood that. And I said, do you think everything is the way you want it right now? Do you think the National Democratic Party is doing a great job for you? Do you think the Republican Party is even being reasonable? And do you think any either party are going to change their ways? So I've been here 14 years. It's gotten worse every year. And uh, anybody's been here for any time at all. You see Mitt Romney come, and he's going to be one sir. He's a dear friend of mine. One, one term, six years and gone. You see Rob Portman from Ohio leave. Uh, we've seen other people on both sides of the aisle say enough's enough. But I want to get all those people that I know have uh, always put their country before themselves or their party. They've gotten disgusted with the process and see if we can create enough 
enough uh, energy or synergy, if you will, to allow the 55% of us who live in the center left, center right, and make decisions from the middle based on the country and not our politics or our own personal politics, uh, public political views. Here's the thing, Rob. I've come to the conclusion. The only way this thing's going to change. The first change, and I think Americans would vote overwhelmingly on a constitutional amendment, term limits. I really believe this. Term limits today is more needed than ever before, and I think that one 18-year term for Supreme Court justices that have lifetime appointments now, one 18-year term for them, one six-year term for the president, so whoever he or she may be as our president can do their job and only their job and not very worry about the next election because you get about one maybe one and a half years out of them before they're in another re-election mode. That would stop that. And two six-year terms for the Senate, that means 12 years total, and six two-year terms for the House. That's 12 total. That's enough. I want to go back to, More the, than to the border for a moment. Uh, yeah. Critics of the president say that he would just revert to the Trump policies for the four years when President Trump was in office, he could solve a lot of the border problems without having to worry about Congress getting on board and coming up with a bill. Your thoughts on that? Oh, I think that basically he should a long time ago declared a national emergency. Long time ago. And I'm still urging him every day, what are you waiting for? Now, it'll be taken to court and it'll be challenged. But it's because a lot of the, uh, a lot of the Trump... Uh, Decisions that he'd done have been challenged, and they would have been challenged and reversed in court. We need a piece of legislation that secures our border, and we have that piece of legislation. But until that legislation is taken up in earnest and passed, then he should shut down, because every day we wait is a day that's more dangerous for the United States of America. Bill. Uh, good morning, Senator. Uh, hey, Bill. Always, always good to talk with you. Uh, you too, when, sir. when you um, uh, announced you would not be running on a unity ticket or the no labels ticket, right. you also mentioned it here that you you put your efforts toward working for a middle ground, giving more mm -hmm. voice to the, the middle sector. Uh, would you put some meat on that statement for us, Senator? How would yeah, you do we this? started, my daughter basically, she's gotten into it and dug deep in the last year and a half. And, come, and, and, and we can explain the business model of how the country, how that politics in the country works today. And it really starts out in 1796 when uh, George Washington, his farewell address, said, "Beware of the political parties because they will usurp the power from the people." And that's exactly what he's been fighting. And those of us who believe in the oath that we take to defend and, and protect the Constitution has been fighting. And now the parties are a duopoly. They're basically two business empires. And they're not going to change their business model because it's been weaponized. And, Bill, if they can make you and most Americans believe, pick a side. You can't be undecided. You've got to pick a side because you only have this duopoly. You have one side or the other, Democrat or Republican. If you pick one side, the other side is definitely your enemy. You've got to help us defeat the enemy at all costs. That's not democracy. It's not how this system was designed. And I'm telling you, it'll be the ruination of the United States of America if we don't bring them back to the purpose and, and of what you know what our great experiment has been all about. Excuse me, Senator. I understand that. My question was more: How are you going to affect this? How oh, are you okay. going to reverse? How are we going to? It? Yeah, we're going basically trying to start a national referendum on. First of all, the uh, uh, the uh, as I told you, as far as the term limits, that's the first thing because every state has a movement. That would be the first and fastest thing that we could do and put put some teeth behind it. We started a 501c4. My daughter, Heather, it's called Americans Together, and she's able to put put some uh, some finances behind that, and we're going to do that. We're also going to explain and try to get in a group throughout America. There's an awful lot of moderate center, centrist movements. They just haven't cohesed around anything because there's not been a national movement to kind of bring them together. We're going to try to do that. I've got a lot of the politicians that I know that I worked with when I was governor and as a U.S. senator that have left because they've been as frustrated as I am and other people are to make sure they're involved in their respective areas also. So there's a nucleus of people that can come together. We change that. We try to explain on the gerrymandering how that's happened, on the primary process of how you can change the primaries in your state to get more people involved. Because... This whole place is only going to run of the character of the candidate you send forward. So whoever you vote for and send to Washington as your Congress or Senate, the character they are and, and or not is what you're going to get. And to be able to 
very seldom, I mean, very simple. <laughs> Ask people. And, and a little quiz you should ask every politician. What's your purpose for serving? Will you put country before yourself? Will you limit yourself to term limits? So if we don't get it passed, will you make a public statement and commitment that you'll be limited to, to a uh, term limit? Things of sort in case we don't get it passed or we wouldn't, we get blocked by some uh, some you know people who are fighting hard and take you to court and things of this sort. So we're looking at every avenue that we possibly can to understand. And also, are you committed to fiscal responsibility of getting our financial house back in sort of a balanced budget? Because right now, we have not balanced this budget in 21 years. We can't continue. And the president just submitted another budget of seven trillion dollars with five, seven point three trillion with five point five trillion of income. That's that's just totally irresponsible. So, Senator, this is Maria. Good morning. Um, quick question. Um, so you're talking about the centrist movement. You're saying you've decided not, and we knew this, that you weren't seeking another mm. six-year sentence. Love the, love the verbiage there. So what's the next? Truth. It um, is the truth. What's next for Senator Manchin? Um, well, where are you headed next? Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, uh, it'll be the first time in 40 years that I, I don't have someone else tell me what my schedule is and where I've got to be. So, <laughs> so true for- retirement? Oh, we find I'm that looking- hard to believe, Senator. I know. Come I'm on. looking Come forward on. to that. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to at least I can decide where I want to go true. and when I'm going to be involved. I'll be definitely involved. You know that. I can't sure. On, sure. on the sideline. But be able to schedule and be able to do things and schedule around family activities, too. It'll be the first time. I've missed so many. And I'm not saying um, my my family has been very supportive and very loving about this, but I've I've missed things that I feel very bad about. And I'm just not going to do that again. I'm just not going to do that. So I will work it around the most uh, important things that I have in my life as my family, but I'm still, they know I'm going to be very much involved going around the country. I have a lot of good friends and good people and a lot of people I've been able to meet and socialize with and work with that are totally, absolutely scared to death of where we're going as a nation. I am one of them. Count me. I've been involved up close and personal. I've never seen us this divided. And, and when I say divided, it's not the people in America. It's not the people in Eastern Panhandle that want to be divided. It's the people in Washington dividing you by picking the sides and weaponizing the political process. This is not normal. This is not normal. When a president, when a, 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 a former president or anybody talks about the only fair election is the one they win, and the only rule of law is for you and not me, and you try to weaponize and tell us what you're going to do, and then on the other hand, you have no responsibility from the Democrat side as far as on the amount of debt that we're incurring, or shutting the border down, I see I see grave grave mistakes and errors on both sides. So I'm not sure you're coding anything. I think we need an overall change. Uh, Senator, I think I, I agree with you, and I suspect that the vast majority of a listening audience also agrees with you. But going back to Pacifics, uh, you mentioned uh, term limits. This is something that's been batting around for many, many, many years. Many years. But it's difficult to do, especially if you've got a Congress uh, that will be uh, – uh, in green in fighting against it. Uh, the states are basically run by political parties. Uh, how do you possibly expect to get enough momentum to address the term limits? A national referendum. But Every how do you get there? How do you get there? Well, you have to basically. There's a lot of uh, a lot of explaining to people. You tell me. I said I was 10, 15 years ago. I was never a big supporter of of term limits, Bill. I never was out there beating a banner, and I was down doing a town hall in southern West Virginia. And a lady stood up, and she said, I wish you would support it, Joe. And I gave her all the reasons because I said, well, you know, you're going to lose a lot of the people with experience and knowledge and and on and on and on. I went through all that, and she looked at me, and she said, think about this, Joe. If we had term limits, maybe we get one good term out of you. And I thought about that. I had no comeback. I had no defense for it. She was absolutely, totally correct, and I've been committed ever since. It just has to be done. How you do it, it's going to take a lot of money. And we, we're raising people who want to change America. They want to change the political process to where the people still have a voice. But wouldn't and that process won't change unless it's pushed from the outside. That's the only thing I'm telling you about that one. Okay, I'll give you another example. Ranked choice voting. 
If it wasn't for ranked choice voting, my dear friend, the Republican Lisa Murkowski, would have never gotten elected in Alaska. She'd have never had a chance. So some of these things can be done and driven from within. But wouldn't the platform of going around the country campaigning on these sorts of issues have been a greater way of getting the message out when you consider in polls that the uh, majority of people surveyed do not want another Biden-Trump election. Right. They were amenable to a reasonable third-party option. How easy that would have been or how successful that would have been, I don't doubt is difficult, but it would have been a great platform to espouse the types of issues that you're talking about. Well, I understand, uh, Rob, that, that no labels, I understand, raised about $50 million to do that. They got 14 states. They're on ballots. They need the 34. The candidate himself, excuse me, has to get on 16. So the candidate is responsible for 16 states, and it's easier for a candidate to get on some of these states that, that uh, are required for the candidate directly to be involved. And the 34 states going through the political uh, juggernaut they had to go through, you saw all the times they had to go to court. They were sued. The political parties were suing them, but they still pushed forward. So we can build off of that, but they just weren't able to get it done to time. Hey, when I, asked, I told him by Super Tuesday, if we saw a pathway forward, I would never be a, a spoiler, but I would be very much interested in putting a team together that could give you a choice on the third party. I want to ask you about some of the legislation you and Senator Capito yeah. have worked on recently and how it will benefit West Virginia. You can take Excuse that if you me. need to. We'll wait. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Hold on one second, if you will. Hold on one we'll, second. We'll we'll talk amongst ourselves. You you okay. take care of that. That that could be the White House. Who knows? <laughs> who know. knows who it is? Yeah, when you're, yeah. you're one of a hundred. You're going to get some important phone calls. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed you are. So we're talking with Senator Joe Manchin, and uh, we have about another five minutes uh, left. I'm in back the right now. I'm okay. back right now. Okay. Buddy. I'm sorry. Yes, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah. So some of the legislation that you and Senator Capito recently got passed. Well, let's go through. Let's just first of all let's get right to what what uh, what the Eastern Panhandle. We got two million dollars to renovate the Martinsburg Boys and Girls Club, one point one million to create an outdoor recreational park in Berkeley County, seven hundred twenty thousand to construct a new trail head in Berkeley Springs, five hundred thousand to install new water lines in Harpers Ferry, and four hundred eighty-seven to replace the HVAC system at the Senior Life Services of Morgan County. These are the ones that I worked on, mm -hmm. and and Shelly and I have worked together trying to bring more and more that we can and directing it to the areas of the most need. We're trying to help everybody on an annual basis, you know, because we both are on uh, approach, which makes it very, very uh, helpful for us to be able to get our, our, our targeted earmarks. Uh, then on, a, on West Virginia itself, we got $390 million for the hydrogen research development. Rebuilding our infrastructure was $350 million for the Appalachian Development Highway System. And uh, promoting our great outdoors was $36 million for the New River Gorge, uh, new national park infrastructure upgrades and then fighting the drug epidemic is something we've worked i have worked on since i've been there so you know just only thing i would say about the earmarks we're directing it to areas that have the highest need and we believe that we can identify those better working with west virginians than bureaucrats sitting in washington so i'm proud of what we were able to do and we continue to get the request and we look and try to help everybody you are linked to the president of West Virginia University position at some point in the future. You have an interest in that position if it becomes I don't know where, I do not. I don't know where that came from. I said, these are my friends. It's my alma mater. I love it. And I love all the people involved in that. But no, I have not been involved in any conversations. Uh, I joked around. I said, I had a hard enough time getting out myself. They want to bring me back in? I don't think so. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm <laughs> that just landed. Sorry, that, that went kind of went yeah, over my head for a second. Come on, that's not true. Yeah. That's not don't they have football tutors? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, we did. I was I was very blessed to be able to, and then I had to drop out for one year because our uh, our whole business, my father's grocery store, or my father's furniture store, and my grandfather's grocery store, all burnt down one year. Since '68, I went back and worked a year, and then be, and my wife urged me to go back and get my degree, and I did. 
So, you know, everybody has a good person behind them that can see much more than we can see. And she made she made uh, that effort towards me, and I went back, and I took 27 hours in one semester. Whoa. They never did catch me on it. Gail, I had to get out. I, I had to make a living. Gail doing well, Senator? She's doing well. She really is. Thank you. You're welcome. She's doing so well, and she, all her bruises are gone. She's in good shape, and we're really – we're just very, very elated because oh, yeah. that – was a very serious accident. It was a high-speed chase uh, that the uh, police were after criminal, and the criminal T-boned her. Mm. Mm. But she was very, it's just been very blessing that she didn't have any more serious injuries than she did. Two minutes, Bill. Yeah, Senator, you mentioned money for the hydrogen plant in West Virginia. Yeah. If memory serves, you had some disagreement with the uh, Department of Energy, the type of plant they were going to permit in West Virginia. Has that been resolved? Yeah, I think really the hub itself is going to basically weed out all of those types of things. Here was the thing. I'm 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 in odds with the administration of how they're trying to dictate to implement the bill and 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 the different ways how you can accrue these tax credits. So that's what we're we're in odds right now working through that. We've been having meetings on top of meetings uh and making sure that you know we're going to have much a lot more blue hydrogen which is made from natural gas because we have a uh, plenty of that, and we're going to. And hydrogen is a, is a heavy horsepower. It's a heavy lifting, if you will, like uh, like fossil fuels, oil and gas. But it's much less uh, uh, carbon immense, uh, carbon emitting. So it's going to be something that can run heavy equipment. It can run planes, trains, and cars, and everything, and big trucks, and everything in between. So we think it's going to be a heavy lifting fuel of the future. We have to mature it. We haven't spent any money on it. It's been around forever, and now we're going to mature it. And I think it'll be tremendous. We have 30 seconds left. Senator, final thought from you. I, I'm just, you know, we're all, it's the greatest country on earth, and we have to really appreciate that we have in, uh, this great country of ours, but we only have it as if we participate in it. And I'm just concerned that people have just kind of given up or they've just retreated to their respective corners and want to fight it out. That is not. We're in an experiment. Nothing like this has ever been done before. Please. If you want it to succeed, be involved. Speak up. Use your voice. Don't just give a donation or contribution to a politician. Tell them, I don't make give contributions or donations, but I will make an investment. What can I expect in return if I invest in you? What can I get if you uh, want my vote? What do I expect? Put them on the spot and hold them accountable. Senator Joe Manchin, thanks so much for your time this morning. Thank you all. Thanks, Appreciate Senator. Talking to you. Keep in touch. Okay, let's sit there. I'll be, I'll be, sooner or later, you'll be seeing me in person, maybe more, huh? There, there you go. Thank you, Senator. Okay, thank you. Bye bye.